Proud of the city they call home, proud of its history, proud of their heritage. It is a city that has historically played the role of host, and so it does again this week. It's a city that is heading into the 1990s with apparent ease, combining the best of the past with an eye toward the future. Its architecture runs from the traditional, like that of a new palace, to full-out modern. And it's all wrapped in a package that somehow manages to bring the surrounding countryside into urban confines. Its industry can be seen on streets that range from Mercedes Straza to Rodeo Drive. But for the moment, the focus of attention is here at Hans Martin Schleierhalle, where in the next two hours we could see the stepping into the spotlight of the next Mary Lou Retton or Nadia Comaneci or Olga Corbett or any one of the some 300 aspirants to the title of champion of the world. It is merely the mastery of the moment that stands between them and greatness. Will it be Brandy Johnson, America's next great hope, or someone from some place who's never before produced a world champion in this most demanding sport? The stories that will set the tone for the gymnastics world for the next Olympiad will be played out tonight here in Stuttgart, West Germany, as ESPN, the Total Sports Network, presents the 25th renewal of the World Championships of Gymnastics. Tonight, the women's team competition. Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, and welcome to the World Championships here in Stuttgart. The women taking center stage tonight. These are the optional portions of the team competition. And look at the standings at the end of the compulsories. 50% of the scoring, remember, is judged right here. The Soviets, no surprise there. They are number one. Romania in second place with China in third, and the United States in fourth place. While with me for expert commentary, Olympic medalist Kathy Johnson. And Kathy, I think you have to look at that position for the United States and say, way to go. The Americans did exactly what they optimistically hoped to do, and that was finish in the top four in the compulsories, so they get to compete in the final round with the best in the world. Because if you're going to have a shot at moving up into medal contention, you've got to compete in that round. There is one name that I think is going to start to creep into the hearts and minds of Americans, Brandy Johnson. Exactly. The entire team outdid themselves in compulsory, and everybody was a little bit concerned about Brandy since she had that virus about a month ago. But she looks strong as ever and is sitting pretty in eighth position. Probably the be-all and end-all question, though. Can anyone catch the Soviets? They've got 1.6, a little over 1.6 lead. The Chinese are as well prepared as they've ever been, but Romania is really the only ones that have a shot at that, but it's a long one. Well, also with us tonight, Olympic gold medalist Bart Connor, the Romanians, Bart, and the Soviets. That's a story that's been going on for years. And it's such a terrific team competition because in the men's competition, the Soviets totally dominate, but in the women's competition, this is always the most exciting battle. Now, remember, the world champion team currently are the Romanians. They won in 1987. Of course, the Soviets are leading here and they won last year's Olympic Games. They have a strong lead, but anything can happen, and we've seen that happen here in the team finals. And this is really where it all starts, too. Some of the names that you won't know until tonight, and all of a sudden they'll pop up and they'll be with us till the Olympic Games. People like Daniela Silivash, who we saw last year, the strongest competitor, certainly, from the Soviets is Boganskaya. She's the current European champion, and she is something else to watch. A lot of things to tell you about tonight. The North Korean team will be on hand. A lot of outstanding young gymnasts there, too, who you just don't see very much. Boy, have we got a lot to talk about. The 1989 World Gymnastics Championships are being brought to you by Domino's Pizza Incorporated. Hot, fresh, delicious pizza. Domino's Pizza. Nobody delivers better. By Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. And by Burger King. If you want to give people what they want, sometimes you've got to break the rules. of the team competition for women, the Soviet Union in first place, Romania second ahead of China, and the United States still to come in fourth place. Right now, this is the rotation just prior to the top four, and some very fine individuals in this particular rotation. Okay, this is the first major competition since the Olympic Games in 88 that the new judging criteria will be used. It's basically about the same in terms of the breakdown. The value parts, which is worth 3.0, in this competition, it's the 1B rules, meaning they need three A's, three B's, and two C's. Notice that no D's are necessary for the basic requirement, D being the higher level difficulty. The combination, which is the construction of the exercise, is worth 1.5. The execution is worth 5.10. Notice that that adds up to 9.6. Here is where the difference is. The bonus points is worth 0.4. You get the bonus point only if you have an additional D or moves of original difficulty or combinations of original moves. 
Wang Bo Sil now second vault, 9437 on her first. Do your chinko or round off layout throw a beautiful vault, a little stutter step on the landing. I really don't think she needed to take that hop. So we await the score of Wang Bo Sil. This is the rotation with teams five through eight. Remember the United States right now in fourth position after the compulsories. China, Romania, and the Soviet Union will be in the rotation with them. Another look. She has excellent position onto the horse. Good twist. Nice open position in that layout ball. And still no score for her. Remember two vaults in women's competition and we'll let you know how Wang does. 9-6 was her score so she'll use that. 9-6, 3-7. Meanwhile on floor exercise from Canada this is Leia Moma. Make that Moma. Full twisting double back, pike position. Good strong beginning. And there's that gymnastic series that I spoke about. One of the requirements, and if they don't do that, it's a tenth of a point deduction. Triple turn, a little bobble on that last part of the turn. That's called a Shushanova, invented by Elena Shushanova. It's a round off straddle jump, and then they land in a prone position or on their stomach. She does a whip back due to a double fall. Everything is very clean. Nothing really spectacular, though. Finishes with a double back. A little hard on that landing. Managed to stick it. Interesting acrobatic move. And another good, strong routine for Canada. Leia Homa of Canada. You're doing quite well in the exercise. And meanwhile, on balance team, we're looking at Deliana Vodvicharova. Vodvicharova. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> she competed in the American Cup this past year. She's in much better shape here. She did well in the Olympic Games in Seoul. I think she was in the United States on a downtime. Round off that handspring with a half turn. A little bit late on that half turn. Handspring land. Her legs aren't completely straight on all of the skills. That's going to counter. Nine seven three seven on the floor exercise of Leia Homa a moment ago from Canada. Very good score. She does a lot of twisting elements in her floor exercise, even uses on the uneven bars with a mount, a round off back with a pull. Some gymnasts are flippers and some are twisters. She seems very comfortable in the twisting position, Kathy. It's probably much easier for her to twist. She's a little bit on the tall side for a gymnast and makes flipping a little bit tougher, so I'd choose twisting as well. Preparing for the dismount. Round up back handspring. Triple twist. We just spoke about it. Tiny bit of trouble on, on the landing. Didn't quite get the twist around, but that's a difficult dismount. Deliana Vodnicharova. How'd I do that? Time? Very good. A little bit better. That's it also have to be a twister to pronounce her name. <laughs> Here's another look. This dismount pass is very difficult. She does a round off back handspring. You really have to line it up straight. And in order to get three twists around and try and go for a solid landing is difficult on beat. She gets a little cockeyed with those legs. They twist it up a little bit. Of course, the judges will take a deduction for that. So we await the score for Deliana Vodnicharova of Bulgaria. And there have been some very high scores in this next to last rotation. This rotation between with North Korea, East Germany, Bulgaria, and Canada. More to come after this.
Which publication tells you about hundreds of great jobs open across the country right now? High paying professional ma Well, the North Koreans continue to be a story here. The results after the first rotation, East Germany ahead of North Korea, but North Korea doing very well, Bulgaria and Canada. North Korea has just been amazing in this competition. After the compulsories, they were tied with the East Germans. Doing beautiful work here on the uneven bars. This is really where their best event is. This is Kim Ok Gum. Three hit to handstand. Giant pull. Tuck double back. Little hop on the landing, but a good opening for the North Koreans here on uneven bars. That's their first routine. And as we mentioned during the men's competition, it's so important to build on that, that first score. Now they can build to nine nines and tens. They had a 9925 and a 9837 and a 9737 in the compulsory competition. It's really amazing that since the 87 World Championships, where they were 19th as a team, of course, didn't compete in Seoul because of the boycott. Their government boycotted those games. They have now moved up this much. That's the most incredible jump I've ever seen by any team. Again, look at their straight body work. And the entire team works bars with this tight, straight body. Good line, good technique. And that is Kim Ok Gum. We still await her score. While you're looking at these kids, there's been a lot of question raised by many of the people here um, about their ages. You're supposed to be 15 or turn 15 this year to be eligible to compete. And you look at these kids' faces, I mean, one of them still just lost their front tooth. Nine, six, eight, seven, just to interrupt for a moment. Not a bad start for them. Not a bad start at all. But as I was saying, many of these people say you're 15 years old and you look at that face and I'll leave it up to the audience. Well, of course, Kathy, in the Orient, when you're born, you're already considered one year old, so there's an advantage, perhaps. <laughs> so, Kim Ok Aguang. <laughs> Oak Goom, I get it, has really set the tone with a very fine performance. And now it is yet another Kim, Kim Yong Wa. Giant full twist. Gosh, a beautiful high flyaway half. Now that is definitely getting your difficulty in the routine and with the amplitude they're looking for. Tuck double back. None of them are sticking their landings. That's something they've got to do if they want to move up in this competition. The East Germans took a nine-tenth of a point lead after the first event. And you're not going to catch them back by not sticking your dismount and not doing perfect routine. So that is Kim Young Wa. And the 9687 put up ahead of her. And the best, perhaps, still to come. She doesn't look too pleased, although it is very hard to really read any expression into the faces of the North Korean team. Very young, very intense. Very, a lot of pressure in this competition. This is the team round, so you've got five other girls depending on your routine, not just yourself. Again, good giant work, tucked double back. A little bit better formed than the girl preceding her, but still cowboys it a little bit, meaning pulling her legs out to the side. And 9-7 is the score, and there's the smile for Kim Myung Wa. So they have already set a pretty good tone. 687 for Kim Ok Gum, 97 for Kim Myung Wa. And we'll be back with more right after this. Monica Kovacci of Canada set to go in the vault here. Just a round off layout full twist, a very common ball here at this competition. Just a little problem on the landing, but a good strong vault for him. The Canadians have done very well on vaults. Uh, they started, they've gotten a 9.75 and a 9.537. And remember, after the first round, they had slipped behind Bulgaria. Wang Bo Sil of North Korea has already performed on the bars, and we'll bring you up to date on how they're doing. And here's another look again. And this was a good vault. I've seen it done better, but here it's a nice, solid vault. Should be a good score for the Canadians. So the second ball upcoming now of Monica Kovacci. Meanwhile, back on the uneven bars. 
still awaiting the score of Wang Bo Sil, and while we do, Pak Jong Sil will wait her turn. Pak Jong Sil, a 9737 in this event in the compulsories. So obviously a discussion amongst the judges. Now the score 9587 for Wang Bo Sil. So they continue to do very well in this particular discipline. 97, 9687, 9587. If the North Koreans are really going to make a move in trying to, to win in this round of the competition, it's going to be on this event. They've really got to rack up some points here. So this is Pak Gong Sil. For Kovachi of Canada, 976. Front giant, four. excuse me. That's a beautiful front giant and the highest. <gasps> oh, she just did the highest Jaeger I've ever seen a woman do on uneven bars. And then she had a major break. Had to stop the routine on the low bar. Reverse hex, two major release moves in the same routine. Incredible difficulty. Giant full, tuck double back. Oh, that's too bad, because that's a really good routine. Excellent routine. But of course, the complete break will cost her dearly. Started to say 9.762 for Kovachi on vault. Trying to keep up with you on scores as best we can. We realize the action is very frenetic. Look at that Jaeger, so high. Kathy, she got into trouble here on this transition. I, d I don't even know exactly what she was trying to do. It's a very unusual connection move from the high bar to the low bar. Now, of course, the bars are wider than they've ever been. With these girls being so small, these connections are very difficult, aren't they? That's the hardest part of the routine, not the major release moves. It's <laughs> going down to the low bar and back up to the high bar. Tanya Kesta on balance beam from East Germany. This is a good event for them normally, is it not? They're usually pretty solid here. They have a low score of a 9.237 that they're looking to throw out. So they're trying to get higher scores. They have a 9.65, 9.675, and a 9.662 so far. That can't spring layout step out. Fulfilling one of the requirements on B, the gymnastic series, in her full turn. And that's her gymnastic acrobatic series. Back hands bring into a season. All her, all her requirements right here in a row. That's her connection down low to the beam. Pak Jong Sil of North Korea a moment ago on bars nine five one two. Watching Tanya Kesta of East Germany on the balance beam. The East Germans have really slipped in their standings in the last couple of years. Down up double twist. They're usually right up there in the top three. Of course, they won the bronze medal in Seoul. Still plenty more to come from the World Championships here in Stuttgart. We'll have more right after this. Kerry Kanuka of Canada now on the uneven bars, and the Canadians have done very well here today. Yes, they're edging closer and closer to North Korea. Here they are. The East Germans continue to lead in this particular rotation ahead of North Korea, with Canada creeping up just ahead of Bulgaria. Real three-way race right now between North Korea, Canada, and Bulgaria. Started out strong. She's done a Jaeger front as her major release move so far. Giant foot. Actually, it wasn't a giant full. She twisted halfway in and halfway back the other way and also broke leg form. And a pike front is now. Take a look at the front Jaeger. Plenty of height on that, so no deduction for the height. She does break form throughout the routine, though. Doesn't have real tight, straight legs. And here is the major deduction. Pike front is now actually right before that skill, she broke form going over the top in a giant, what should have been a full, but she twisted halfway one direction, halfway the other, so she won't get credit for that. 9-5, the score for Kerry Kanuka of Canada on the uneven bars. The Canadians really helped themselves on vault. Had very, very high scores there. In fact, their lowest score was a 9-5-3-7. Highest was a 9-9-1-2. Monica Kovacci now. 
a nice high reverse tack to a one and a half twist. Straddle back to handstand. Good work so far. Slight form to Dustin. Little hop on the landing. But about the strongest routine they've had thus far. So Monica Cavaccio hoping to improve on the 9-5 put up by her teammate, Carrie Kanuka, as the Canadians continue to show strongly here. That should help with being their second routine now. They've got four more routines to go to build on her score, which will definitely be higher than the 9-5. Canadians, of course, having to make do with only five competitors, so they do not have the luxury of being able to throw out one of the scores as the East Germans, who we're looking at now, did in the last rotation. Exactly. So only three more to go. That always puts a lot of pressure on all the other competitors. Christian Toms of East Germany now for exercise. East Germany now has a very comfortable lead over North Korea. Double pike. And everybody will tell you, the key to doing well in a team competition is hitting beans. And that's exactly what these Germans did in the last rotation. Double twist to a back handspring straddle jump. It's actually quite weak in tumbling. This really isn't as strong as a team we're used to seeing from the East Germans. Exactly. They were, again, they won the bronze medal in Seoul. And even prior to that, they've always been in the top three. At all the Olympic Games and World Championships, you can always guarantee that they'll be there. And they're just not as strong as they were in the past. A lot of rest there in that corner. and a tuck double back this time. They're really trying to get away from, from that, standing in the corner, waiting for your tumbling pass, resting. Most of the top gymnasts are not doing that anymore, quite as much as they did, say, a few years ago. But it doesn't cost them anything right now. Uh, yes, it does, when it's that long. Meanwhile, over on the uneven bars, the Canadians continue, and right now it is Lori Strong, 9637 for Monica Kovacci a moment ago. Beautiful combination. I'm sorry, that was a front Jaeger. One and a half twist over the low bar. They call that a strong. She was the first to compete at an international competition. She really has some original moves here and very difficult moves as well. I like her aggressive style. She moves very quickly. Giant fall. So an open pipe, double distance. Lori Strong. And remember, her teammates have put some very good scores up there. So you have to think that Lori's score will be at least equal to that or better. Lori has done quite well internationally for the Canadians. Look at this combination. It is really beautiful. Good height on this Jaeger somersault. Then she swings through, does a one and a half twist, regrass the low bar into a glide. She didn't seem too happy with that. That floor exercise that we were watching just a moment ago by Christian Tom. So Germany scored out at a 9.625. Meanwhile, back on floor exercise, while we await the score of Lori Strong on the uneven bars, the East Germans this time, and I believe this is Karina Rungi. <laughs> some discussion perhaps that the East Germans were receiving some inflated scores during the compulsories. I think toward the end, um, one thing we haven't mentioned is a, is a new rule in progress. They do not seed the competitors in a compulsory round. In fact, the teams don't even compete together. They take, say you take the American team, two of the USA girls go the first day, two go the next day, two go the following day. And many people have commented they don't really like that system, but they were doing it trying to make it a little bit more fair. Double tuck, 
And on the line. On the line is okay, as long as you don't go over that line. Karina Rungi of East Germany. A lot of East German fans on hand here for this competition. Incidentally, 9-7-7-5, the score for Lori Strong on the uneven bars a couple of moments ago. So the Canadians continue to do very well in this discipline. Coming off a strong performance in the vault, we're at Hans Martin Schleier Halle in Stuttgart. This is the optional portion of the women's team competition in the World Gymnastics Championships. Kim Wang Suk of North Korea. And again, just like on the uneven bars, they were excellent in this event in compulsory. They have remarkable poise and concentration to be such young gymnasts and fairly inexperienced. They really pay close attention to the toe point, the leg straight. You lay out, step out, save that one. placement of the hands, the movement of the arms. It's beautiful. Aerial walkover. I really like their choreography. Very nice. For most people now, choreography is very weak because they put a lot of emphasis on the difficulty. Nice, the hands bring swing down, swing right back up to a handstand. Full pirouette. They really do have everything. They have flexibility, strength, difficult skill, and very artistic as well. It's nice to see near perfection in movement. Double top, beautiful landing. Excellent routine that time by Kim Gwang Suk of North Korea. Is that an angelic face? waiting for her score. 9-8-3-7, the score for Kim Guang Suk. She has to be happy. Very happy. Just in hitting your routine. There's nothing like that feeling. Again, look at this landing. And this really marks the difference between a good gymnast and a great gymnast. One that fights for every single tenth of a point in striving for perfection and sticking landing. Kathy, things are changing as far as scoring is concerned in gymnastics these days. So what are the judges looking for on the balance beam? Okay, the special requirements for balance beam, you have to have an acrobatic series, which is a tumbling series with one element being a flight movement. Also a gymnastic series, two dance elements in a row. A mixed series combining gymnastics and acrobatics, which is a turn or a leap combined with an acrobatic skill like a back handspring or an aerial. A 360 degree turn on one leg, which is a full turn. A big leap or jump and an element or connection close down to the beam. If these aren't there, it's a tenth of a point deduction. On balance beam, Wan Bo Sil of North Korea. Wan Bo Sil really excited the audience during the compulsory competition, had an excellent uneven bar routine, and then came back and did a beautiful beam routine as well. That can't spring layout, step out. Her choreography isn't as strong as some of her teammates. That was her gymnastics acrobatic series. She did two split jumps right into an aerial cartwheel, combining dance and acrobatic skills. I can't spring back pike. Slightly missed that front foot, but recovered well. Astrid Hees on floor exercise, nine, five, eight, seven. Preparing for a descent. Round off, double back, little hop forward, but a strong routine. 
And again, very hard to read any emotion in the faces of the young North Koreans, and you might say it about the East Germans as well. As Barbell Bielgoss for East Germany and floor exercise. It's amazing they have all the same haircuts. <laughs> Triple twist. Also some problem on the landing, but stayed in bounds. She doesn't quite complete every position, every movement. that too often in women's competition. Very common in men. The routines aren't as electrifying here as you'll see in the later rounds. They just don't capture the imagination and the attention. Double twist. So Barbell Vilgoss has done well enough so that they'll be able to drop that 8-9-3-7. Score on beam, which we were watching by Wang Bo Sil of North Korea, 9-7-2-5, and Barbell sets the product to the crowd. And back on the balance beam now. Kim Ok Gum. In a very pressured situation. It's always tough to be the first up and the last up. It's tough going up any time, but those two are very critical positions. The first one, of course, sets the pace and that base score that the others build on. But this is your cleanup battle. Two back hand swings for back pike. Barbell Vilgos. 9725 in floor exercise a month ago. Good scores for the East Germans, and we've just seen a fall here for the North Koreans. They could very well increase their lead. It sounds like I keep harping on it, but it does seem interesting for all of us to note that this young girl is 4 feet 8 inches tall and 68 pounds. Television seems to be a little deceiving. Oh, she broke on a back walkover. Another very simple move. I think this is a sign of inexperienced gymnasts. They're very young. They didn't compete in Seoul. Their last competition, and only for some of them, was at the World Championships. So it's a lot of pressure, and they're not holding back. They're doing all the tricks, if not more, than anybody else in the competition. Just nerves, perhaps? Nerves. And like I said, they're, they're doing a lot in the routine. They're, they're got as much difficulty as the top-level gymnasts in this competition. You're right, Kathy. Typically, the inexperienced gymnasts water back, and they don't uh, do the most difficult exercises. These girls are just blasting through world-class routines. And they really were an unknown quantity coming here to Stuttgart. Which is, kind of puts them in a perfect position. They have nothing to lose. So I think they just went out and went for it, and it's done them well. So a little problem there for Kim Ok Gum. And we move now to the fourth and final rotation in this rotation prior to the top four teams. The top four teams, of course, the Soviet Union, Romania, China, and the United States. Lots more to come from Stuttgart after this. I'm Janka Dobner of East Germany prepares for her second vault now, a score of 9537 on her first vault. East Germany continues to be in first place in this rotation, but the story in this rotation, and she missed that pretty badly. Yeah, not a good vault at all. Story in this rotation is Canada, who has now moved ahead of this team, North Korea, with Bulgaria in fourth place. Again, we are speaking of this rotation. Still to come, the Soviet Union, Romania, China, and the United States. On floor exercise now, from North Korea, Kim Myung Hwa. She opens with a pulse scene double back. Little stumble on the landing. Pulse 
Triple twisting dive roll. Nice combination, aerial walkover. A very beautiful arm and hand movement. Double twist, punch front. Tumbles back the other way. Round off stretch jumps down to her knees. North Koreans have an 8.987 that they're trying to draw, so they really want to hit the rest of the routines here. So far, she's doing quite well. Double tuck. Good landing. Nice routine. Kathy, let's talk about the scoring criteria now in floor exercise. Okay, the special requirements for floor exercise. Must do a gymnastic series with three elements, three leaps or three jumps. A gymnastics B, which is a dance element of mid-range difficulty. Three different tumbling series, and one of the series must have two saltos in that series or a D-level salto. A gymnastic acrobatic series connecting dance and gymnastics again. And a B dismount, of course, we'll be seeing these in these routines. An absence of these special requirements is, again, a tenth of a point deduction. Floor exercise. Kim Blanc. back out. Kim Guang Suk, 4'4", 61 pounds. 15 years old from North Korea. She actually, in the compulsories, was called back for a curtain call by the audience here at the Hans Martin Schleier Halle. How often do you see that? Beautiful middle tumbling pass. She did an alternate through to a double back and then right back with a double twist. And in fact, just to add to that story for just a moment, she didn't really know what a curtain call was. And so the way she took it was her coach picked her up and put her up on the pedestal and said, OK, this is what a curtain call is. And the crowd responded. I worry about that now, though, sometimes. They have a rule that says you can't do that anymore. Uh, ever since the 84 Olympic Games, they changed that rule, and you're not really supposed to go back up on the podium. Double tuck dismount. Very good routine for her. Meanwhile, on bars, we... But Nicharova... How am I doing with that name? Second time I've had to do it tonight. <laughs> Maybe we have one it. more shot at it. Okay. Beautiful free <laughs> hit reverse it backwards hat. next time. Very difficult move, and you don't see many of them. Tracy Talavera did it in the Olympics in 84. But most people do the reverse heck out of a giant. Wow! Tough. Full to the double back dismount. That's tough <laughs> for a taller gymnast. We've seen some of the little short guys do it, but... And the score for Kim Gong Suk, 9-8 on floor exercise. She doesn't look very happy about that. She's saying, I could have done that a little better. I think she heard you. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, it is Cho Gyeong Wee. They really are pretty gymnasts to watch. The hands, the arms, good form. Another full twisting double back in pike position. Their technique is so excellent because they don't look like the powerhouses to be able to do the kind of tumbling that they're doing, but they have excellent technique, so they do get the power necessary. Good point, Bart. Double twist to a punch front, tumbles back to a full twisting back handspring. She has the best expression of all. Look at that. Completes every movement to the fullest. One can only wonder what kind of impact these girls would have had in the Olympics last year in Seoul had the North Koreans shown up there because, boy, they are impressive. Oh, this is a beautiful music change. 
very few gymnasts that can work to this type of music and pull it off. Tuck double back. Didn't have much lift on that, but boy, she pulled it around. Excellent. Choked off we to the applause of her teammates and a capacity audience here at the Hans Martin Schleier Halle. That's about the biggest response of the night for any single event so far. Still plenty more to come from the World Championships here in Stuttgart. We'll have more right after this. Stuttgarters are proud of their own surroundings, and here at places like the Schlossgarten, you're just as likely to run into a local as you would be a tourist here for the gymnastics championships. Barry Tompkins with Kathy Johnson and Bart Connor. We start the final rotation, the final four teams, and you are looking at Sandy Woolsey. Remember the Americans? Doing very well after the compulsory stage in fourth place behind the Chinese, the Romanians, and the Soviets. All the teams are off to a good start in the first rotation. Identical scores for Sergeant Nikova of uh, the Soviet Union on her second ball. So you said it. Same ball, figuratively and literally. This is Sandy Wolsey of Desert Devils. A triple twist, beautifully done. And she really made that around, Kathy. It's very difficult to pull all three twists. It's also difficult to keep form in a triple twist, and she really did a good job of that. She did particularly well in the compulsory competition. Best compulsory round I've ever seen her have. Nice middle tumbling run. This is the best I've ever seen Sandy look in any competition. extension in the movement. The position's really marking them. Last tumbling run. Double twist punch run. Good finish. Good routine for the Americans. Been a good discipline for the Americans so far. Sandy Woolsey, obviously she likes it. And we'll see how the judges liked it. This first tumbling run is re really the highlight of her routine. She does a whip back right here, through to a triple twist. But boy, she gets it around all the way. Many people have trouble getting that last little eighth of a turn in. This is her last pass. And of course, we talked about the bonus points. That's really what these top gymnasts are striving to get the bonus so they can score higher than the 9.6. And this is one of the skills that helped her do that. Double twist, punch front. She gets a bonus point for the originality of that connection and for being at the end of her routine. And now she'll have to wait for her score. Ahead of her, Kim Kelly started it off with a 9.687. Good score for the first competitor. Then a 9.75 for Christy Henrik. And now it is Sandy Woolsey. Who we'll awaits the judge's verdict? Nine, eight, two, five. Excellent. That is going to help the American cause considerably. They've got three more gymnasts to go, and building on a nine, eight, two, five. That was excellent for Sandy Woolsey. She had a nine, six, six, two in that same event, a compulsory. So she is improving with every out. Now for the United States, Wendy Bruce on floor exercise. Wendy has really come on strong since winning the international mixed pairs back in March. She won that with her partner, and I think it gave her a real boost of confidence. Full twisting double back, perfect landing. Nice amplitude on the leash. Both she and Brandy Johnson have very similar floor routines, the type of music they've chosen. Of course, they're both training with Kevin Brown down in Altamont Springs, Florida. And Kevin really 
hear some on power coming as well, Kathy. And it definitely shows off in these passes. Whip over through to double tuck, and she just stays in bounds. Saving that tenth of a point deduction. In a way, for the U.S. team, this is the perfect event to start on because with all that nervous energy, they can use it up in the floor exercise. Exactly right. And a double twist. It's not as difficult a last pass as, say, the Soviets and Romanians are going to do, but she had good difficulty in the early part of the routine, and the whole routine was clean. Romanians is doing, doing very well, as a matter of fact, on the uneven bars. A moment ago, a score of 9925 for the Romanians. And right now, it is Eugenia Popa. It was a nice ginger at the beginning of the routine, and she just did a reverse hex. A lot of release moves, a lot of difficulty in this routine. Half in, half out. That's a full pushing double back this time, and it was done beautifully. Their scores have been simply brilliant so far. 9-9, 9-9, 9 9 9 by Aurelia Dobre, the lowest of the Romanians. So while the Americans are doing wonderfully well in floor exercise, everybody else is really posting some big numbers early in this rotation. Good job, man. They certainly are. Wendy Bruce, 9.862, another excellent score for the Americans on floor exercise, but as good as they're going, they're in there right now with the very best in the world. We have had a 10 on vault by Alicia Dudnik of the Soviet Union, and there is just action going on all over Hans Martin Schleier Halle, and we'll be back with a lot more of that action after this. We have had some unbelievable scores. We'll try to keep you up to date. Shen Ki Ting right now on beam for China. And she's got some catching up to do too. 9975, five rather put up by Yang Bo a moment ago. Silivash on uneven bars just a second ago, waiting for her score. Another brilliant performance. We have seen some outrageous scores already in rotation one, a great routine. It's important to keep in mind that there are four events going on, the four best teams in the world all performing brilliantly all at once. It's crazy. It really is. And you just can't keep up with the high scores. The Chinese are just excellent on this beam. Compulsory was beautiful. Better than anyone else in the competition. Lay out chest roll down. Tiny little wobble there. Preparing for the dismount. Round off, double cut. Just a slight hop on the landing, a little bobble on the full turn. Other than that, it was very nice. We will have her score in just a moment. We wait for Sinevash. There has just been another 10 on the vault by La Sinova. And Truly this is remarkable. Brandy Johnson, her middle tumbling run. She nailed her full in at the opening pass. Just did whip over through the double tuck. It's a really good music selection for her. The audience gets into it. They get behind her in this routine. Last tumbling run. Double tuck. Oh. The first break for the Americans. It'll be five tenths of a point, production for the fall, and a tenth going out of bounds. Oh, what a shame. The rest of the routine was just solid as could be. Very tough break for the Americans, but I'll tell you, Silivash, a ten on uneven bar. How many is that, Bart? Four, five? I think it's four to this point. There's been a lot of talk about bringing the level of the scores down, but scores are booming through the roof here. The problem is the gymnasts move faster than the rule changes do. And that's Brandy on her last tumbling pass. She over-rotates the double back, falls out of bounds at six-tenths of a point off. And on the vault, Bulganskaya of the Soviet Union, second vault, her first a 9-9. Nine -nine. By the standards that they've been going, that's not so good. Round up. Full twisting layout. Oh, beautiful. Yuchenko's full. 
And keep in mind, some of her teammates did double-twisting your chinkos, which is a more difficult ball, but she did this so clean, there are hardly any deductions. And, of course, Bogan Sky is the Olympic champion last year on this event. Brandy Johnson, 9-4-5-0 on floor exercise. That despite the fall. Look at the clean execution of this ball. That is the way the Soviets do everything. So clean, no deduction, perfect form. It's interesting to note when she sticks, watch her feet, one foot just slightly in front of the other as she's trying to plant that landing. It's a Boganskaya technique. This was the first 10 of the night. This by Alicia Dudnik of the Soviet Union. That came in the ball, and it started a row of 10s by the Soviet athletes, by the Romanians, some very fine scores on the ball. Here is yet another one. This is Lashenova. All together now, and look at this ball. Oh, full foot in your chinko. She lays it out at the end, arms go out to the side. Great style. They said it was team competition, didn't we? <laughs> Lashenova with the 10. So there were two 10s in the vault by the Soviet Union. Here's a look again. You can't do this vault any better. And this is what I like. She does the pull, then opens the arms out for the stylization and nails the landing. Well, that started it. So two tenths. And then it was Silivash, the Olympic champion on the uneven bars. Beautiful stalder work, and you rarely see that anymore. Right to a front stalder. Stalder again to a full pirouette. She has a nice variety of moves here. Leaf moves, in bar work with the stalders and free hip dismount. And a beautifully stuck landing. Some extremely high scores from three leading teams, the Soviet Union, the Romanians, and China. Soviet Union, 49.749. They are still in first place as we take another look at the dismount of Sulivash. Romanians scored 49.637, the Chinese 49.674. By comparison, the United States, 49.011. Still plenty more to come from the World Championships here in Stuttgart. We'll have more right after this. And for the United States, Kim Kelly, a 9-7-1-2 on her first vault. This is her second vault. So the Americans doing just fine. So the Yachinko, full twist, hop on the landing a little bit off center. The Americans did well just to get into the top four and wind up with the best in the world here on the last rotation. It's a dream come true for the Americans to be in this final rotation. Alicia Dudnik now coming off a 10 on the ball. How about that mount? That's a tough mount. First time that was done was Michelle Goodwin of the United States. Back at the World Championship. Beautiful. Oh, caught her foot on the ground there. Lost her rhythm. That's a pretty substantial deduction there. Her release moves aren't as high either. 9737 for Kim Kelly on her second ball, improving slightly. And a double tuck dismount. What a shame. Coming off a 10 over on the vaulting. She actually had trouble on this event in the compulsory. Yeah, she had a 9-3 in the compulsories. Exactly. And after the third event compulsory. She was in a position to take the lead, be the top Soviet, the top gymnast in the compulsories, and she had that mistake on bars. Christy Henrik in the vault. Nice vault, tiny bit off center and a little hop on the landing. I think she can better that vault. I'll tell you what's frustrating about this competition is the U.S. girls look great. Nine sevens, nine seven fives, they're performing very well, and they're not gaining any ground on anybody. If anything, they're losing ground. The problem is they're looking great, but it's a relative term when you're dealing with the best in the world. In fact, they came in about two points behind the Chinese after the Chinese performed on the beam and the U.S. on the floor. They dropped to 2.4 behind the Chinese. 
really trying to stick this ball. Christy always has good form on all the events. She has beautiful toe points. 9737 was her first ball. Her teammates called her E.T. for <laughs> extra tough. <laughs> She's a real fighter. She's had a good year. Came on very strong. This is the best shape I've seen her in. And she's been consistently getting better all year. Chinese struggling right at the moment in floor exercise. 9037 by Wang Wenjing. Layout for twist. A little bit better than the other one, I think. I think her coach, Al Fong, will be very happy with that. Good position in the air. A little low on the landing. She had to hop forward slightly. 9-8-6-2 was the score for Dudnik on the uneven bars. Just another look at the ball. Trying to keep you up to the moment on everything. This is Lashenova coming off a 10 on the vault a moment ago. Natalia Lashenova of the Soviet Union. Score on Henrik's second vault, 9.75. Does improve slightly from the first. Oh, beautiful high reverse hack. Oh, look at that, way up above the bars. This is what you're looking for in bars. Stalls will work as well. Again, a good combination of skills. Many of the girls have what we call stock routines, all the same, and this isn't. Very different from the others and done exceptionally well. You're looking at gymnastics that, I have to say, from my limited experience, is as good as it gets. It's pretty darn close. Lashenova, remember, had a 10 in the vault. And we will see how she does on the uneven bar. She's not going to do a whole lot worse than that. Meanwhile, on the balance beam, Aurelia Dobre has had a 9.95 for Romania. That's an amazing mount. Round off back handspring onto the beam. Back handspring, two layouts following. That's a long pass. This is Christina Bontas of Romania. And this, again, coming on the heels of a 9.95 by Dobre. Fulfilling all her requirements. She just did her gymnastics acrobatics series. Combining gymnastics and acrobatics. Back handspring, layout, step out, back tight. She's done two very difficult passes on the balance beam already. Very risky. Now these are the kind of routines that do earn their bonus, but there are several just medium range routines that if they're, if they're smart, they can design the routine and still get their bonus, but they don't compare to these routines. That's the problem in our judging system. Maybe they'll have to come out with extra bonus. So far, a 9837 and 9862 and that 995 by Arugia Dobre for Romania. And Lashenova on the uneven bars when we saw a moment ago, 995. And dismount with a run up at handspring, double top dismount. She liked it. Christina Bontas. Romanians doing considerably better in the optionals here than they did in compulsories. Meanwhile, we'll take it back to the uneven bars. That's pretty par for the course. The Soviets have always been probably the strongest in the compulsories. The Romanians always come on stronger in the optionals. Svetlana Boganskaya of the Soviet Union now. Giant full turn over the top to reverse heck. Good height. It's amazing she works barehanded, no grip. That's unusual to see at this level. That's pretty. Split right into the toe on handstand and a touch of the flyaway. She doesn't do the most difficult routine. And in many cases on all the events, that's, that's just like her, not to do the most difficult routine, but so perfect. Meanwhile, over here on, at the head of the vault runway. Wendy Bruce, the United States, who had a very good 9.875 on her first vault. She awaits the second. 
on the balance beam, incidentally, Bontas is finished and had a 9.937, and the Romanians' two best are still to come, Silivash and Podorak. Plus, this is a good opportunity for the American women with their strong vaulting scores. Wendy is terrific, and Brandy Johnson coming up next is also fantastic. They can gain some ground on the Chinese that are having trouble on floor. Oh, good vault. As good as she can do it. Beautiful position in the air, nice, clean twist. And of course, that landing that the judges are looking for. Bogunskaya, a 10 on the uneven bars that you saw just a moment ago. Will we see another one right here in the vault? Oh, it's hard to say. She had good form throughout the whole vault. Perfect landing. Case of nerves for Wendy Bruce right now as we await her score. 9.875 is the score for Wendy Bruce. See, this is where it really helps out. The Soviets and Romanians, usually their first girl up gets a 9-9. Nine, nine. A 9-8-5, nine, 9-9, nine, nine, they can build to the 10. When you start with 9-6s and 9-7s, it's very difficult to build up to those high scores. And here is Brandy Johnson and a fine 9-8-7-5 by Wendy Bruce in her face. Brandy's doing the same ball. Chinko with a full twist. Now, in her first event, she had that fall on floor to start, so you know she's trying to get back on track. Okay, the ball was good in the air, but the problem was with the landing. She over rotated it. Brandy is so powerful, and that's the reason she got into the finals in Seoul in vaulting because she shows that terrific power. She overpowered it on floor exercise. Her only other opportunity, really, I think, here to make it into the finals at these world championships is sticking a vault here in the preliminaries. And that's going to be crucial. Trying to keep what? an eye while you watch the vault of Brandy Johnson in replay. We're trying to keep an eye on the balance beam where Daniela Silivash, who had a 10 in her first discipline, just had a brilliant performance on balance beam, and we await her score right now. This is the event that I've always thought Brandy could not only make finals, but she could really medal in this event because she has two strong balls. Many gymnasts only have one strong ball. And they're from two different families. And she does them as well as anybody in the world. But she's got to stick this ball here to try and get into finals. Yeah, this is the one because she over-rotated the first one. She had a good compulsory score. But she'll need to nail this one if she even hopes to make it into the finals. And remember, in the finals, everybody starts from zero. So Brandy has as good a shot as anyone at winning a medal for the Americans. If she can get into the finals with this ball here. We're going to take a stick. The most perfect ball she has. Forming a Yuchenko with a full twist. She's doing her second ball. Hamstring, front pipe with a half twist to Brandy out. Not nearly as well as Brandy can do this vault. I've seen her do that vault unbelievably well. Still plenty more to come from the World Championships here in Stuttgart. We'll have more right after this. Soviet Union continues to lead and lead Romania. And they are emerging clearly as the two dominant teams here with China and the United States right now remaining in fourth place and having a very good competition. In fact, they're, they're closing on the Chinese. They have closed that lead. Yeah, the Chinese were leading by 2.664 coming in after the second rotation. It's only 1.713, so the Americans picked up about nine tenths of a point. The American vault is against the Chinese floor. Soviets are on a good event for them. The balance beam, that can't bring the two layout. And Strajeva has already set the tone. You were talking about setting the tone with the first competitor, 995 for her. And this is Baitova. Nice work, back row extension, back handspring. Acrobatic series. 
kind of a weak one in a way, wasn't it, Kathy? Yeah, I've seen a lot better. A, a simple leap. Most of the girls are using more difficult combinations. Triple twist dismount. Landed a little funny in a deep pike. That will be a deduction. It'll be interesting to see what she scores on that because that was a significant deduction. Whether the judges take it or not will be, remain to be seen. That's true, and the judges have seen some tremendous balance beam routines to compare it to. Well, there's a lot of talk in Soul Kathy about the fact that the judging was too easy, the gymnasts were better than the current scoring system. Then all of this talk about the revised system, and yet the first girl up for the Soviets gets a 995. Did they really revise the system, or are the judges just not paying attention to it? They did revise the system, but in my opinion, it's too easy to get the bonus. And it, in that way, we cannot separate the very good from the great. A 9925 for Baitseva. Boy, that is a low score. <laughs> yes. They'll probably end up throwing that one out. Ma Ying, incidentally, of China, first to vault a 9812. Front tuck up to the balance beam. Used to be a very common mount. Now you don't see it that much anymore. This is Lashenova of the Soviet Union, and she has had an excellent competition so Watch far. Watch this powerful run right here. Back handspring to layout, oh. landing two feet together. That is a gorgeous move. Some people do something that they call a layout, but that was a true layout. And that's an interesting spin. Just like Lee, Lucy Song, this is her gymnastic theory. And what's Lashenova done today? Nothing more than a 10 on vault and a 995 on bars. Gymnastics acrobatic series, a little more original. Forward roll, just jump. Another layout, step out. She maintains good leg form on those layout step outs, which is important. Many people lose that form. Two back handsprings to a full end. Full twisting, double back dismount. I can't tell you how difficult that is off the balance beam. It's hard on the floor. So Lashetova just having what could be considered the meat of her life with a 10 and a 995 so far. And will certainly score very highly on the beam. How she can walk off so casually after doing a full in off the balance beam, I'll never know. Look at this, perfectly straight on these backhand things. Enough power to pull that around. And of course a step. But the judges will keep in mind how difficult that dismount was when they take the deduction for the landing. Very difficult and very well done. Natalia Lashenova. And no score yet for her. And there's Nelly Kim once again. Been around this track a little bit. She was many people's favorite gymnast. 9962. Nine, so obviously they took a little bit off for that little step she took. And now on the balance beam, maybe their best, although I'll tell you, it's very hard to pick any one of them as the best Soviet. One arm handstand, it's open very strong. Nice original little move. But the Healy twirl while. that the exactly. guys use on parallel bars. Actually, Steffi Craker did that a long time ago. It wasn't really that long exciting. ago when I was competing, so it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's really exciting to see Strazova in this competition. Many of you will remember in Seoul, she hurt her knee on the balance beam while she was competing and had to be carried off the floor. She's back and she looks terrific. As you can see, there's a flesh tone knee brace on her left knee there. Well, step out to the backhand screen. Nice split loop showing the full flexibility. Dismount, double touch. Ooh, a step on the landing. 
with that and a slight bobble after a full turn, a little unsureness throughout the routine. Still going to score well, though. So far for the Soviets, 9.962 by Lashenova, 9.925 by Baitova. Sparajeva now waits for her score. Of course, she was a member of the gold medal winning team in Seoul. Nice now. There with that first little bottle. Jack Hansen, low out, step out. Jack Hansen perfectly straight with the balance sheet. And for the United States, Sandy Woolsey. Woolsey waiting her turn on the bars. This Wendy, is Sandy's best event. Wendy Bruce has just scored 9.762 ahead of her. Stradjeva, 9.925. Nice reverse hex. Straddle back to a handstand. Good positions there. Giant fall. Lost a little form there. Saw her toe point. Legs slightly come apart or cross. But other than that, the rest of the routine is very nice. Sandy Woolsey. Well, the Soviet Union continues to dominate here in Stuttgart. A lot more to come. And we'll be back right after this. Well, Stuttgart is the state capital of Baden-Württemberg, and it's the home to over 600,000 West Germans, a city that is rich in tradition and very proud of its heritage. It is a future-oriented city, to be sure. And now in Florex... Christina Pontas of Romania. Open with a double layout. Good position in the air, nice and strong. Woolsey, 9-9 on the uneven bars. Very good score. Full twisting double back. Back Hansen, straddle jump. Right through to a double back. Incredible tumbling pass. Two tumbling passes. All of those were difficult moves combined together to form one tumbling pass. Gymnastics have come a long way in the last few years. Dismount, a whip back through to a tough double back. What a tumble she did. Christina Bontas of Romania. Having a terrific day, by the way, at 9-9 on the uneven bars, at 9-9-3-7 on beam. She's going to score well there. Tremendous. Uh, one can sit in awe of those tumbling passes, all in the same routine, and easily done. Front tuck onto the beam. Sasha Nenkaba on beam, 9925 for the Soviets, and Henrik of the United States, 9937 on bars. The Americans getting a couple of very good performances on the uneven bars. Henrik and Wulsi. Bulgenskaya now on beam. She was fifth on this event at the Olympic Games. Not a bad evening for her either, 995 in vault. Perfect 10 on the uneven bars. She is a good all around gymnast. No weaknesses really in any event. But then most of the Soviets are like that. Nine, nine, eight, seven for Bontas and Florex, and the crowd thought she was probably worth a ten. Bugenskaya has such terrific long lines. She's actually five three and three quarters, which in this competition she's a giant compared to many of the other gymnasts. Oh. Two back hands to a layout, step out, and a fall. Randy Johnson also just had a fall on uneven bars. And we will 
We'll have a chance to look at that in a moment. Major happenings here in this rotation. Major happenings in this building. Double back this now. That's a shame. She had a great competition going. Of course, in terms of the Soviet team, it's not as bad. They can drop that score. Here's a look at Brandy Johnson. She did have a fall. She's having a tough meet here, at least in this portion of it. And you've got to wonder what's happening with Brandy, whether it's the virus that really had an effect on her training. She had a terrific year. Maybe it was just too much packed into one year. She's been up since the Olympic Games in Seoul. This has always been a Take very a difficult combination here. <sighs> Looked like she was right there, Kathy. Exactly. She was trying to catch that, though, in a cross grip. And she didn't have a good grasp of the bar. It's very disappointing. Like I said, she's had a tremendous year. She's done so much for USA Gymnastics. In international meet, she won five gold medals in the meet in East Germany. Guggenskaya on the beam, 9, 4, 7, 5. And that is the lowest score that they have had on beam, so they likely will not even use it. It will depend on Alicia Dudnick. And Dudnick is on the bar now while we look at Brandy Johnson. Brandy trying to gather her thoughts right now. Meanwhile, on floor exercise, Daniela Silibash of Romania. She's very exciting to miss. I, I enjoyed very much watching her at the Olympic Games. She's second in the all around there. She won the gold on floor exercise. As well as the gold on the uneven bars, the balance beam. She did a great job over there. Very nice gymnast. And had a very good floor exercise here. She's having a very good competition here, as a matter of fact. Silavash, who did everything at the Olympic Games and has not really missed a beat here, as this, of course, the first major competition following the Olympic Games. She's already had a 10 on the bars and a 9-9 on beam. Take a look at their tumbling run. Whip back. Two back hand springs to a full end. Difficult pass. Many of the gymnasts are just doing the full end, but to tumble through to a full end. Ten was her score. I guess that's about as good as you can get. Boy, this was a very significant rotation in terms of the all-around competition as well, because Boganskaya, who is the current European champion and favorite here, fell off the beam, while Silivash, who was due a world championship title in the all-around, Knocking out two tens and a nine nine. Brandy Johnson, incidentally, nine three six two with that fall on the uneven bars. Well, the story continues to be the dominance of the Soviet Union, but plenty of other competitions still to come. From here at the Hans Martin Schleyer Halle, back with more after this. Svetlana Baitova, the Soviet Union in floor exercise. Soviets are always great on this event. They're so expressive, and I love the way they interpret the music. We'll just see double back. They really have a feel for the music. Very dramatic. Just step out, we do a double full. It's a pretty pass. Finish this with a tuck double back. A little awkward on the landing. Pretty routine. Katrina Baitova, the Soviet Union. And again, this is their start off batter. Very capable of starting with a high score and, of course, building to 
none other than the 10. I was kidding earlier that that's what Angela Lansbury looked like when she was by each of his age. What do you think? <laughs> this is a nice pass. Full and a half to step out due to a double twist. It's not the most difficult pass, but it's a nice combination. And nine, eight, three, seven for Baitova. So as you said, the leadoff hitter doing the job for the Soviet Union. <laughs> Meanwhile, Li Yan of China on bars. Interesting to note, the Chinese actually beat Romania on the balance sheet. Nice work here. Good for Perez, right into a reverse hack. Again, those are ways to get the bonus points, combining the difficult skills, one right after the other. Up a giant. Tucked up a flyway. Hop back. That will be the deduction in that machine. The yawn of China. The Chinese always look so pretty on the uneven bars because of their body line. It's so straight. Great handstand, good alignment. The two giant full turns right into a reverse head. Combination of good difficulty. And the end score not yet announced. Meanwhile, the Romanians who have done a brilliant job. You're looking at Eugenia Papa waiting for her second vault. 9.85 on her first vault. Now keep in mind, at the same time, the Americans are over on the balance sheet. This is Lacromora Philippe, uh, not Popa. And she missed that ball to handspring front. Fairly easy vault for the Romanians. I'm surprised. That's right, Kathy. Most of the Romanians are using the laid-out Yurchenko full. Leon, incidentally, who we saw on bars a minute ago, 9875. You're right, Bart. She does the handspring front tuck, which has now been upgraded so that it's worth a 9.9. .9. Still, it's not as difficult as, as the other balls are doing at that level. So she will have another 9225 for uh, Lacromira, Lacromia, Philippe. Kim Kelly had a problem on beam, and here is what happened to her. Lay out, lay out, pass. It was completely off. She didn't even get her second foot off. Really sad. Philippe, second vault. Handspring front with a half a much better vault and a more difficult vault. That was a handspring front tuck with half twist, so it's worth a 10.0 and will be judged from there. Alicia Dudnik, who despite three tens in the competition, one in the compulsories, and two in the optional, still may not make the best three of the Soviets. That's how well they've been going in this competition. She just opened with a pike, full twist and double back. And it does remind me of old Corbett back in 1972. She ended up winning two events there, but didn't make the all-around final but became famous nonetheless. She had a 10 in this discipline in the compulsion. Nice pass. Two and a half twist, punch front. They all have that sense of ballet, too, don't they? Very much so. This is why Soviets have always been my favorite team, or at least one of my favorites. Next to the Americans, you guys. Of course. It really is a treat to watch. The presentation is so dramatic and so elegant. What's good about this team is they leave no stones unturned. They work on everything. Good body movement. They get their entire body into the floor of the team, into the music. They're very expressive. Tuck double back. Very dramatic routine, beautiful. Just terrific. Galicia Dudnik of the Soviet Union.
Now, she scored a 10 in the compulsory competition. If she scores a 10 on this, this will be the first 20 compulsory and optional together in the competition thus far. I think Nadia Komenich was the first gymnast to score a 20 in the 76 Olympics for her uneven bars. Did either of you see that she missed anything in this routine? You can always pick a routine to pieces, particularly here in slow motion. Yeah, you, you can, can find little slight legs apart. Then. These are hard to see in regular time. And also, what, what's really important, the judges now can take, at least in the women's side, can take a half a tenth of a point deduction. Whereas before, they either had to decide whether to take a full tenth, or if they didn't think it was big enough, they wouldn't take any. 9.95 nine, is her score, so they did see a couple of little flaws and did deduct that, but not too bad. Still plenty more to come from the World Championships here in Stuttgart, and we'll have more right after this. Meanwhile, lower exercise, Lashenova, who at the risk of being redundant, has also had a brilliant evening here with a 10 in the vault, the 995 on bars and a 9962 on beam. Now this is detail. Watch her facial expression. Double layout, back handspring, straddle jump, punch front. Tumbles back the other way. Through to a double back. That's more difficulty in her first half than most people have in their entire routine. If I were her, I'd stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> and just take your 10 and go home, right? This really is amazing. But what's so nice, on top of all the difficulty, the toe point, the execution, the perfect form. Whip back through to a double back. She's now done the equivalent of two routines. We'll see what she has in store for the last tumbling run. A double back. And another perfect landing. Beautiful. Now this is where you will see a 10. I can almost guarantee it because the one preceding her is a 995. Where do you go? I give her a 10 five. I'll tell you, they are applauding it on press row here. Paul Zert, man who has seen it all. Adney Bart next to me applauding. It was a terrific exercise. It's interesting to note though, she cowboys her double backs really wide. Now the judges have the option of taking that deduction. It's an accepted technique, but it certainly isn't that pretty. I agree with you, but Meanwhile, Silivash on the vault, and we've been talking about all the people who've been having great meets here. Silivash is having a great meet also. She does a Yurchenko full twist. Now, a lot of people get higher than this on this vault, but she gets quite a bit of distance. We're going to go back to Svetlana Bugunskaya. Now, this is some fun choreography. Pike full in. I will tell you, Sidavash, a 9.95, and she has another vault coming. Full in, half twist, step out. Due to a double twist. Very different choreography than the other Soviets. Finishes with a tuck double bat. Nice double turn to end the routine with. Crowd like this one, Buginskaya of the Soviet Union. And one is just better than the next. It's hard to believe that year after year for the past, I don't know how many years, the Soviets have turned out these gymnasts time and time again. 9.962 for Sidivash on her second vault. So she continues to have a brilliant competition here. It's great to see Boganskaya performing at such a high level because three days after the Olympics in Seoul, her coach, Miromanova, 
Lubov Miromanova died mysteriously. And it had a tremendous effect on Boganskaya. And of course, it's exciting to see that she's back and she looks terrific here oh. at the World Championship. Oh, what a sad story. And a 10 for Boganskaya. The judges knew what they were doing, they were saving it. November 15th at 7.30 Eastern, live on ESPN. We'll see the United States, who just completed her routine on the balance beam here on videotape, a portion of that. She was so solid on this routine. Round up a handspring, double back. The one step on the landing toward a 9.9. .9. She was really having the event of a lifetime for her. I would have to say so, and I'm sure she would agree. This is the best I've ever seen her look. She has really worked hard. Final Soviet performer on floor, Olga Stradjeva. Lubinskaya having just scored a 10 in the same event. Vashenova having a brilliant performance just before her. Hard to find any place that's up. now they know they've won this competition it had one excellent performance and floor exercise after another the Sheneva and Buginskaya embrace her look at the American team good news bad news for the Americans tonight Randy Johnson on the balance beam recorded a moment ago Nine nine eight seven. The score given to Stradjeva of the Soviet Union, the same score that Lashenova had. And Luganskaya with the perfect ten. Randy's under a lot of pressure here. She's had two misses in the competition. It's tough to end up on balancing. Two back handsprings, layout step out. It's a major break. She saves the ball, but it's still a major break. It's four tenths of the point left. You were saying earlier that this apparatus, above all, after you've had a tough competition, is extremely difficult. It's hard to get your confidence back. Gain or layout, step down. But as I said earlier, Brandy has done so much for USA Gymnastics. She's done so well. She won the American Cup, the USA Championship, five gold medals in East Germany. Unheard of for an American to do that. And she's caught the attention of everyone around the world. It's just unfortunate she's having a bad meet here. But this meet is not over for her, for any of these competitors. Still a long way to go. This is just the team competition. Exactly. She's made a great contribution to the team effort. Her score is counted in many instances as the high score. Double back dismount. Trouble on the landing. And of course, the major break in the middle of the routine. And a look at Brandy Johnson, and it has not been the most pleasant of evenings for her, but she will have other moments, and Bart Connor has headed for the corner of this Hans Martin Schleier Halle, and we will try to get a word with Brandy Johnson, if we can, when we come back, right after this. Well, to the victors go the spoils, and down on the floor of the Hans Martin Schleier Halle, Bart Connor with a couple of guests. Bart? Thank you, Barry. I'm joined by Wendy Bruce and Sandy Woolsey, two girls in their first major international competition. And what a great event for both of you. First of all, your score is all between 9.7 
and 9.8, and a big finish on the nerve-wracking balance beam, Wendy. Yeah, um, I had a lot of wobbles on beam, but the score was still good, so I was pleased. How'd you deal with the pressure of your first major international event? You seemed pretty cool out there. Yeah, surprisingly, I was really relaxed, and um, I just did bar routines like I was in practice. So. Speaking of the relaxed atmosphere, all of your scores were between 9.8 and 9.9, and a lot of the teammates tell me that you're the one responsible for this sort of casual, relaxed atmosphere for the U.S. team. How do you keep it so loose? Well, I just relax and try to do the best job I can and just think about it as workout and smile. The coaches have talked about trying to keep the relaxed atmosphere in the training sessions. Everybody looked good, but it was tough on Brandy Johnson today. Yeah, I think it was, and I really felt for it, but I had to keep going. Well, we appreciate you all both holding up very well in your first major international event. Good luck in the all-around finals in the next round. Thanks. Congratulations, both of you. What do you have? Give me two pizza. Well, we come to the end of a most exciting competition here in the World Championships in Stuttgart. And, Kathy, I think two words maybe describe my feelings about tonight. Soviet Union. Boy, they were great. The Soviets definitely continued their dominance here. In fact, 9.762 is the lowest score they counted in two days of competition. And the Romanians, even though they came on strong in the optionals, they couldn't close that gap with the Soviets. Although Daniela Silivash of Romania is leading the all-around. And the Chinese did a beautiful job, particularly on the balance beam to come back from a sixth place finish at Seoul in the Olympic Games to come in third here. And the Americans, they were superb. This is the best I've seen them look all year long. Sandy Woolsey, Christy Henners, they all just did great. Yeah, Bart, what about the Americans? There will be a tomorrow. Yes, and as we mentioned at the top of the show, no scores carry over from this round to the finals. Brandi Johnson will have her chance at a medal because she'll be in the vaulting finals. Christy Henrich and Sandy Woolsey will be in the uneven bar finals. And then Sandy, Wendy, and Brandy will all be in the all-around finals. So there's still a lot of hope for the Americans in terms of winning individual event medals as well. Well, what we might have seen here tonight is an old story in a new form and the emergence of a couple of teams who might be able to be a force and one the world leaders could look back over their shoulders at in years to come. For Kathy Johnson and Bart Connor, I'm Barry Tompkins. Good night. The 1989 World Gymnastics Championships have been brought to you by the number one ski boot in the world, Nordica. Reach a new high. By the good time, great taste of McDonald's. And by Daihatsu. Since 1907, the small car specialists from Japan.